Oh, hello friends. Welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you with me. If it's your first time checking out the show, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, leave me a comment down below with any thoughts, feelings, or suggestions. I'll be sure to ignore them. <laughs> Only joking. We're what? A few weeks henceforth from the Francis Ngannou versus Stipe fight two that ended in dramatic fashion in the second round with Francis Ngannou being crowned the new heavyweight champion of the UFC and we're all still basking in the glory of that fight the unpredictability of it the the crazy finish the fact that it started one way and then ended the other the fact that some people that had this you know had the bet that Stipe would win have now got egg on their faces and if there was another person who would have egg on their faces it would be our great friend Brendan Shaw for some reason few weeks out of the fight he's still trying to convince us and himself that his early picks and his early suggestions and his skepticism of whether or not Francis Ngannou could come back and have some level of takedown defense and improve his wrestling and grappling to an extent that would give him a chance against Stipe he's still trying to convince us that that take that he had was centered in real fight analysis and not done specifically for the intent of causing a reaction from the internet or is he actually trying to reiterate that actually he knew all along that Francis Ngannou was going to win and because Steve is one of his great friends who he never met he had to make sure that he backed him on video who knows who knows in an ideal world he would just say hey I hold my hands up I fucked up I got it wrong it was a bad call it happens all the time but fuck you if you have anything to say I can still kill you with my bare hands that would be something that I would say right I would say that quite clearly but he's obviously very worried and very kind of concerned about how he's viewed in terms of his level of fight analysis and MMA knowledge and he's standing in general compared to his peers so in an effort to rewrite that narrative he sits down and tries to explain it in some way to make it some sense because of course he was due to go and sit down with Francis Ngannou on the Mike Tyson podcast hot boxing judging by the clips that I've seen had some varying levels of success so let's hear Brendan in his own words describe why he decided to go so hard on Francis Ngannou and so I see Francis doing all these shows and I'm like, what, when's he booked for, uh, when the hell's he booked for my show? Cause he always, when he's in town, he always comes on. Oh, big deal. And so, uh, didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him. And then a little birdie tells me that it's not Francis. It's not Markel. One of his, co his wrestling coach, I think his name's Nick, heard me, heard me, was a fan of the show, watches the show, heard me discuss big Francis. Fan, Go prior going into the steep a rematch and remember the point i made is everyone every show you tune into name anyone big in the space everyone Ooh, you tune into legs. says france is a completely different fighter he's a different guy he's better he's more experienced his my, frame of mind's different his wrestling's better he's a different fighter than when he fought steep a previously all i said all I said was, we don't know. We do not know because... Nah, you didn't though, didn't you? You added a little bit of sass onto it. He tried to make, he's trying to make it seem like he was just being like objective and trying to weigh up things and trying to be a critical thinker. I remember when that was a phrase he kept using, right? And try and weigh up the pros and the cons and try and see who could win. No, he was adding some sauce onto it. He was making it seem as if it's impossible for Francis to improve his grappling or take down defense or wrestling in any way that would make it comparable or even a match that would make sense for someone like a Stipe. In Brendan's eyes, that first fight basically showed us that Francis can't wrestle won't wrestle and isn't going to learn how to wrestle anyone that's watched a few USC fights have seen a few fighters who have lost uh, previous fights due to a deficiency in their game go back to the drawing board improve or adapt or add some skills to their arsenal and then come back looking at an entirely different fighter a great example that I used recently was Brian Ortega Brian Ortega's ground game and jiu-jitsu is second to none but his striking wasn't that great and the moment he got absolutely molly against max holloway and then he came back 
against a Korean zombie, if I'm not mistaken. He looked incredible on the feet. His striking and his boxing looked incredible. Now, the question for most fans of the UFC was, can you improve your striking easier or quicker than you can improve your wrestling and your grappling? That's a question that a lot of people have up there. You don't know. It depends on what coach you ask and what fighters you ask. But I guess it just depends on the person because Francis isn't young. He's about, well, he's in the mid 30s and he ended up trying to, and Francis ended up figuring out how to wrestle. So obviously it depends on a fighter, but there's obviously has been occasions where fighters have been able to improve their striking, improve their jujitsu, improve their wrestling to a level that would give them a chance in the rematch or in whatever fight they had next. It happens quite often, but for some reason in Brendan's head, he could never see that happening. He just thought because Francis Ngannou came in being the haymaker guy, that that was how he was going to end. No, you choose, you decide as Francis, as Francis showcasing the fight, Fighters decide what they want to do. Fighters decide how they want to approach training camp. Fighters decide what gaps in their arsenal need to be addressed. And if they're humble enough to accept direction and criticism and go back to a drawing board, and if the goal and if the desire is big enough for them to commit entirely to it, fair, it will happen. It will happen and we saw it. Going based off his last four fights, his longest fight was a minute 12 i think and we didn't see any wrestling uh in that in any of those fights you know curse blades obviously a, a wrestler he got knocked out uh that was i think 45 seconds the other guys we, we didn't really see them try to take him down uh eric uh nick sick i think is his name yeah R badass complete badass um but i you know i you're his wrestling coach and i get they've done a great job but for yeah, remember I got to create a show here. So if I come on here and go, Francis via KO, and then you turn another show and Chael goes Francis via KO, turn another show. Ariel says Francis KO, and then you turn into Luke Thomas. He goes Francis KO. There's no show. So now he's admitting he's only doing these fight picks just to make a show, just to be a contrarian, just to stir up some debate, mate. I'm pretty sure people are not tuning into Brendan Schaub's show for the fight picks anyway. Didn't he say it was mostly a lifestyle show? It's mostly like a laid back kind of approach to MMA fight analysis for the most part from what I've seen again, being casual from what I've seen compared to the other guys. It's not as if like he tries to go out there and show that he's done any research. For the most part from what I've seen, he just reads off people's fight records on Wikipedia and tries to give some sort of estimation as to who's gonna win based on stuff that he remembers. But there is no breaking down of technique, of style, of the way people strike, of upbringing and training camps. Well, he's not, he doesn't really get in with the weeds like that at all so now he suddenly switched and said oh i'm doing just doing it for a reaction it's just a prank bro it's just a prank just a prank guy god this guy has no shame there's no show so my job is to paint a picture or come up with some other avenues or discuss you're not chel sonnen bruv you're not chel sonnen discussion or something that might make you think differently going into the fight oh all i said come was on everyone and their mom and his coaches are saying that france is a different fighter and i'm telling you we don't know and i'm right we don't know because those four fights you're wrong because he won and he showed us that he's a different fighter you're wrong fights leading into it showed otherwise we learned nothing or as your friend delia would say ah ah <laughs> if you look at the rosenstruck fight we didn't see you look at the rest of curtis blades uh Derek lewis you know, we look at all these fights leading up to it. We do not know. That's all I was saying. I didn't say he's not better. I'm saying we don't know. And what do we, and what happened at the the Monday after he starts Stipe? I said, Welp, we do know now. We we saw, we learned the coaches are right, the critics are right. He is better. And you are wrong, right? Let's say you're wrong. Look at that touch. Touch the back of the ear when you know you have been found out. This guy, man, he's honestly, this is the funny thing that's really strange. Brendan was, say what you want about the guy, right? But he was top 10, you, what heavyweight, I think at his time, right? Pretty decent. Fair enough, you could say the competition at the time wasn't that great. But this guy came from obscurity, playing, you know, professional football, wanted to be an NFL player, dreamed to have that career. It didn't work out pivots and then decides to go into ufc with no real background in in fighting from what i've heard no real background in martial arts picks it up really well really quickly to the extent that he is you know in contention of maybe having uh, a run at the belt beat some absolute legends along the way 
right? Currently, career kind of flats to the sea, but fair enough. He, he still, you know, can say he competed at the highest level. You would just assume there'd be a little bit more about his analysis and what he says about fighting. The only thing that's really been of interest, I think, that's really separated him from his peers has been his kind of interpretation of the business because obviously he was there. He got to see... I'm pretty sure Brendan got to see the, the, the era when they were able to have sponsors, fighters themselves on shorts and stuff. And he also got to see the other side when they got signed to Reebok and, you know, everything was kind of funneled through the UFC and everyone got paid a pittance. So that's been one of the unique selling points of having Brendan Schaub as a voice in MMA and UFC, or well, mostly UFC, because he doesn't really care about Bellator. But for the most part, that's been the great thing to have his voice there because he gets to speak about it passionately from the fighter side that's been jilted by someone like a Dana that's had you know his problems with Fox and all that sort of malarkey right he has a very unique perspective on that but when it comes to actually analyzing fights the guy's pretty useless when it comes to actually talking about you know what um you know maybe weighing up scenarios and thinking of things that might happen and whatever it may be and all this from malarkey he's really really bad and this is meant to be a show where you're meant to kind of be getting some level of insight into the fight game and if anything it's it's nowhere different to like hearing Stephen a smith talk about flipping ufc it's no different to hearing someone like me talk about ufc cars and i'm just a casual fan i just tune into the cars that i like and follow the fighters i like and sometimes you know for the most part i am a big fan of what the prelims i always think the prelim fights are pretty decent especially when there's a massive card on on the main card i feel like the prelim fighters come out with a point to prove like they should be on the main card too but this isn't is this this isn't what you'd expect from somebody that was a professional in the field really is it it's no better than fans commentary really he has worked on his wrestling not only did he work on his wrestling but his wrestling's damn good his sprawling his his technique uh the seat belt hip to hip the ground and pound, he's a lot better. Yep, you guys were right. That's it. That's it. So, Any admission that you were wrong or no? I was, I was a little worried about that going into Tyson, and it wasn't a Francis thing. He's like, what? I don't give a fuck, dude. It's His team, I think, was like, dude, you're you're going too hard on France. I'm like, that, that's me at a two, dude. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> we're so grateful that you gave you uh you suggested that he had no chance of winning and you were at a level two tar mate thanks that's me chilling I, that's just a discussion i can't bring up the question we don't know so that's what, again he's rewriting history he didn't say we don't know he said that he had no he basically intimated that francis had no chance of beating steve Bay because he can't wrestle which is fine have your opinion but you gotta stand on it you can't then come back and say oh i was just trying to you know i've got a show to do i've got to make duh, 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 duh. come on all the beef is squashed not that i don't <laughs> think there was beef i think they were just like come on dude, he's wrestling is better. all right horrible. there you go but it's a good one and so that drops on it's gonna be on both mike tyson oh who cares brendan brendan he's this guy man this guy man. Other, honestly like fair props to him for being able to cash in a check from showtime analyzing you know fight cards and you know being the voice of mma and whatnot and riding this like ex you know heavyweight contender thing down to the ground but god almighty mate if this is where you get most of your MMA news from and you're fighting that lesson some picks, then I pray for your bank account. But anyway, that was it for now. Um, thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If you're still check out the show, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. And I'll see you guys again soon. Peace.